Let's take an example to see what does it mean to establish that a problem is back learnable. And the example we take is uh, the same one that we've had in a number of um, uh, videos so far, and that is the uh, problem of learning axis aligned rectangles. And I'm going to show you that this is uh, pack learnable. And so for this problem, the question is going to be, if I want to um, learn uh, using a certain strategy, and in fact, I anticipate I'm, I'm going to use the most specific hypothesis. Given a, a set of data points, I'm going to always output the most spe specific hypothesis. So um, the question is going to be, if I want to have error at most epsilon, where epsilon is a parameter um, that, that we are free to choose however we, we like, I would like to have error at most epsilon with probability at least one minus delta. The question is going to be how many training examples should I have? And, and if I can put a polynomial bound on this, then I have shown that indeed I can learn the class of axis aligned rectangles in the framework of pack le learnability. So what I will do in my learner, so uh, the, the learner I'm going to choose is always choose the most specific hypothesis. It's just my choice for, um, I, I'm certainly allowed to, to choose um, whichever algorithm uh, works to establish back learnability, and I'm choosing this one. I just make a comment that, in fact, uh, it doesn't make much of a difference. I could also take the uh, most uh, general hypothesis, or I could take the one that is uh, exactly halfway between the most specific and the most uh, general hypothesis. But I will take this one because the calculations are a little bit easier. So <clears throat> what this means is that uh, whenever I'm given a set of data points, for example, like, like this one that we have in front of us, we are going to output the most specific, specific hypothesis. So this, if you remember, is the tightest rectangle um, that includes all of the positive data points and none of the negative ones. So in our case, this would be this rectangle. And we don't know if this is the real class that these examples are coming from, but we know for a fact that the real class uh, is going to be uh, only larger than this. It cannot be smaller because uh, we already include all the positive examples and any smaller class would miss some of these um, uh, positive examples. So the real class um, would be um, maybe um, something like uh, this, and, and we don't know this, but uh, it could be larger uh, and uh, it could be potentially something like this. And so we realize that by choosing the most specific hypothesis, the only errors we are going to make are going to be on data points that are sampled from this space. Um, because for such data points, our model is going to, to label them as being negative, in, whereas in fact, um, they are uh, positive examples. So uh, that's where our errors are coming from. And to prove that this problem is pack learnable, I'm going to show you that um, by selecting a suitable number of examples, I can make this space relatively small. And, and I'm, I'm going to do some calculations in a moment. But the intuition for the calculations I'm going to write in a moment is the following. You see, I want to make this space um, uh, small. So the, the, the gap between the model I'm learning and the real class, I want this to be as small as possible. And obviously, if I have very few data points, this gap could be quite uh, large. But I'm going to take more examples. And as I'm taking more examples, um, the moment I have an example uh, following here, then the uh, model I'm learning being the most specific hypothesis is going to be enlarged. So the more examples I'm, I'm taking, some of them will fall into this gap. And my model is going to reduce this gap. So intuitively speaking, with more examples I take, um, uh, I'm going to make this gap uh, smaller and smaller. And so in the end, I, I will want to achieve um, a level of uh, error, which is upper bounded by epsilon. And, and so the question I'm asking is, how many examples did I draw um, so that I become, um, uh, you know, I, I, I put an upper bound of epsilon on, on this um, uh, error my model is making? So the aim is going to be
um, take enough samples so that um, the probability of um, a positive example um, being um, um, you know uh, predicted uh, erroneously as negative is at most epsilon so so that's our aim and in fact i'm going to make this aim even more specific and um, i'm going to say well <clears throat> as a matter of fact i'm going to take as many examples as i need so that in this strip that i'm just drawing in here maybe i should use a different color um, so if i'm taking if I'm looking at this particular strip in here, just um, on top of my model, if I'm looking at this, I would like the probability of a positive example falling into this strip here to be at most epsilon over four. And the reason is why I divide by four is that I will also ask the same for this strip, the probability of positive examples falling in this strip to be at most epsilon over 4 and also I'm going to ask that the probability of positive examples falling into this strip is at most epsilon over 4 and the same for this one here at, at, the, at the right. So if I can make sure that all of these are at most epsilon over 4 then obviously this condition is going to be uh, satisfied. Uh, the the, the prob probability overall to fall in this area is going to be certainly at most epsilon if it is at most epsilon over 4 in each one of these strips. So I'm going to reason about this. I'm focusing on just a single strip um, and I'm going to say well how many examples do I need so that I, uh, uh, I, I make sure that uh, uh, the probability of other positive examples that, that, I, have on, that, that I haven't seen uh, falling in that area is at most um, epsilon over 4. So we reason about it in the following way. We turn this around and we are asking, well, look, all of my positive examples actually have missed that, that strip. It's not out of question, but um, what's the chance that that strip is there, but all of my positive examples have, have missed it? Well, the probability of just one single positive example missing that is going to be, if I draw enough, is going to be, um, uh, uh, you know, 1 minus epsilon over 4. So 1, uh, maybe I'm writing it on the, on the next slide. So the probability of one of my positive samples missing the strip is <clears throat> 1 minus epsilon over 4 because the probability of falling in there was epsilon over 4 so the probability of missing that one is 1 minus epsilon over 4 but you see all of my positive examples have missed that so the probability of all my positive examples missing that strip is obviously 1 minus epsilon over 4 uh, to the power of my positive samples which is um, uh, n. And now because I have in fact not one positive not, not just one strip but in fact I have four strips so then it follows that the probability of all my positive 
examples uh, missing any of the four strips is uh, in fact at most I should have written here also at most because I, I put n in here so is at most so is at most four times <clears throat> this one so four times one minus epsilon over four to the power n <clears throat> so the aim is going to be choose n such that this probability um, which is bounded by uh, 4 times 1 min minus epsilon over 4 to power n is at most delta so if I can make sure of this then then we are uh, we are certainly uh, fine we are achieving our goal uh, we we want to have uh, error at most epsilon and with probability at least 1 minus delta so the question now becomes how to choose n in such a way that this is certainly satisfied so here is how we we uh, reason about this remember about this uh, classic uh, inequality so we we have that 1 minus x is smaller than or equal to um, exponential of minus x and if we apply this to to our case um, so this implies that uh, 1 minus <clears throat> epsilon over 4 is at most exponential of minus epsilon over 4. So when I'm rise, rising this, this to power n and I'm multiplying by 4, we get that this 4 times 1 minus epsilon over 4 to power n is at most 4 times exponential minus epsilon n over 4. So if I can make this to be at most delta, so choose n such that this part is 2, then what I really care about, meaning that this would be smaller than delta, is certainly satisfied. So the question is going to be, how do I choose n in such a way that this is satisfied? Well, let's focus on this and, and solve in terms of n. So the way this goes is I'm going to divide by 4 and apply logari logarithm. So I'm going to get that minus epsilon n over 4 is at most uh, logarithm of delta over 4. And this is equivalent with um, n being larger than because I, I multiply by um, a minus 1. So this is going to be um, 4 over epsilon times minus logarithm of, of this one, which is the same as logarithm of 4 over delta. And so here we go. We got um, our um, uh, you know polynomial approximation in terms of 1 over epsilon and, and 1 over delta. So <clears throat> this is just one example of a class of problems that is back learnable. Um, there are many other examples of um, such problems and it's a good, um, you know, theoretical um, guarantee that the problems we are working on um, can be in fact learned efficiently. Um, and we will see in the next videos more concrete examples on how to do this learning, how to choose between different hypotheses.